Welcome to The Authority of Love. My name is Greg Williams, and thank you for joining me on The Authority of Love broadcaster podcast. Again, you can listen at WJMM.com to the podcast. Uh, podcast tab near the upper right, Love and Lordship links gets you today's and the previous two days' messages. Also, you can listen to the podcast and view the videos at uh, podcast at loveandlordship.podbean.com. That's loveandlordship.podbean.com or videos at vimeo.com forward slash loveandlordship. Hope you enjoy them and they help you, encourage you, maybe challenge you from time to time and share them with others as the case may be. We're continuing this week with Thanksgiving. And so yesterday it was how to do Thanksgiving with some priorities and tips that help us uh, order our lives in such a way that we can be much more thankful and enjoy it. Today we're going to talk about how do we learn to and why should we give thanks in all things. 2 Corinthians 9.15 tells us that we should thanks, give thanks to God for his unspeakable gift, and that is Jesus. Now those who receive emails or texts from me know that I often close with a scripture, and oftentimes for a while it was this one. It's a great place to begin, end, and fill all things in between with gratitude. I must wholeheartedly confess right here and now, didn't do it yesterday, didn't have time, so I'm going to do it today, that I'm a grade A, number one, certified holiday junkie, okay? I'm especially known in my family and circle of friends as a Christmas freak, and I do, quote, overlap, if you're on video, you can see it. If not, I'm doing the air quotes, overlap Christmas with Thanksgiving. I don't do it to diminish Thanksgiving, but in my mind, to add to it. I begin decorations the first weekend of November and usually don't take them down until mid or late January. I know there are many who start much earlier and end much later. I know there are some who only do one day for Thanksgiving and one evening and day for Christmas. I fully get the longer period. I don't understand at all the one or two days, but I know you have your reasons. Just don't hate on me for how I do it, as I certainly won't hate on you for celebrating Thanksgiving and Christmas as you deem best for you and your family. But please, don't miss the blessings and opportunities to celebrate all of God's goodness to us in so many ways, the greatest of which is Jesus coming in the flesh the greatest thing we can give thanks for is Christmas, God in the flesh. Now, you're going to hear much more about this in our December programs leading up to, to uh, uh, Christmas, of course. But we're on Thanksgiving, and that's the greatest thing I give thanks for. I know there is often much pain in life and relationships, hardships and losses, and, and it is especially felt at this time of the year. I want to be sensitive to that, and I'm even more so as... My family and I spend a second holiday season without my dear mom, who passed away last September, and my wife Amy's stepfather, who passed last October. This brings memories and recollections with occasional tears, and much more so with laughter and with a lot of thanksgiving because of so many wonderful years together. I hope this message and this week's messages encourage you, no matter what you've been through or are going through, to be a person of gratitude, a truly thankful person. You see, for everything in my life that I love and hold dear, I owe thanks to my Savior and Lord who left all of heaven as fully God to become fully man so he could die on a cruel cross to pay a debt of sin that I could never pay and give me the gift of freedom and eternal life in him that I could never earn. Now, again, we're going to have more on this as we move through, but that's where we need to start with Thanksgiving. For now, I simply want to give you my reasons, and I pray they are or will become some of your reasons for giving thanks in all things. Remember I said Philippians 4, 6, that you lay your request before the Lord and without worry and anxiety and with all in all things give thanks. That's Philippians 4, 6. And 1 Thessalonians 5, 17 says, give thanks in all things. I'm sorry, 18, verse 18. 16 through 18 says, rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all things, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. So let's start with number one, give thanks to God because he is God. There is no other, and we can rest assured that his promises and presence will never fail us. Check out Joshua 21, 45. 
Joshua 23, 14, and 1 Kings 8, 56. No matter what we may face, he is good for his word. Not based on how we think it ought to be, but much better for how he knows it ought to be. You can always count on him even when you're not sure. He is sure and always has your best in mind. In line with this, number two, give thanks to God because he is sovereign, faithful, and good. We see God referred to as sovereign, ruling over all, nearly 300 times in scriptures. All are powerful references either in those who recognize and honor his sovereignty in their lives and the events around them and in all of creation, or in the consequences of those who fail to recognize him as such. One of the most touching, personal, and powerful to me is found in Luke 2.29, when the righteous and devout Simeon, who had been promised and waited on the Lord that he would allow him to see the Messiah, sovereign, faithful, good. Even when we don't see it, feel it, understand it, or agree with it, God is good and we can count on him. Check out Romans 8, 28 for all those who love him and are called according to his purpose. purpose. Give thanks for who he is in your life and in all of creation. Number three, give thanks because of, because of all of his wonderful provision and blessings. Roman five, Romans 5, 17 and Philippians 4, 19 speak to that God cares for us and meets all of our needs in Philippians out of his glorious riches in Christ. He will provide everything you need according to all that he has given us in Christ. One of the best things you can do when life and needs and others seem to be dragging you down is to simply stop, take some time to write down, count, and thank God for your blessings. If we take the time and are honest, we will find that there are many Life, breath, food, shelter, clothing, friends, talents, opportunities, successes, marriage, spouse, children, job, joy, peace, contentment, and I could go on and on and on. But I think you get the picture. And as we do stop to thank him for each and every blessing, it changes our hearts and attitudes, allowing us to recognize and give thanks for even more, even for our struggles. Number four, give thanks for saving me and you from sin and ourselves. John 3, 16, we all know, for God so loved the world, he gave his one and only begotten son that whoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9 says, don't you know you're saved by grace through faith, a gift of God. He justifies me or makes it as though I never sinned. Check out Romans 3, 21 through 26 and Romans 5, 1. He sanctifies me or sets me apart for his perfect will and good purpose. Look at 1 Corinthians 6, 11 and Hebrews 10, 10 through 14 for more on that. He reconciles me, puts me back into a right, good relationship with God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit that I could have in no other way. 2 Corinthians 5, 18. I live out this new life in Him. I thank Him for making me His masterpiece in Christ, Ephesians 2, 10. Don't you know that you're recreated in Christ to do the good works that He prepared in advance for you to do long ago? And finally, for giving me new life in Christ, 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Number five, give thanks for and rejoice in every trial, tribulation, struggle, and setback. Read James 1, 2 through 4. It literally says, give rejoice in every trial and tribulation. Count it all joy. When I was walking totally in my flesh, I blamed God for everything. So it was kind of okay, uh, impossible actually, not kind of, but impossible to thank him for anything. As I have grown and continue to mature in Christ, I have seen more and more how even the toughest situations, circumstances, relationships, and even failures are simply ways that he points me to himself and his truth and grows me more and more to be like Christ. I have learned and grown so much more in my trials and struggles than I have in the successes and victories. So I have learned to truly choose to be thankful and even choose to rejoice in the midst of hardships and problems because I know he is at work for my good 
and for his glory. This also causes me to recognize him as Lord always, Lord in triumphs, Lord in failures. Thanking him in all things places him on the throne. Number six, giving thanks for Jesus himself. 2 Corinthians 9, 15, we talked about it yesterday, starting out and here, maybe even again today, I've already lost track, but um, thanks be to God for his unspeakable gift. There's no description for it. Do you see a theme in this Thanksgiving? It's all about Jesus. Now you know why I overlap the holidays. Everything mentioned above and so much more I not only have, but am thankful for because of Jesus leaving all of heaven, coming to earth as a man and giving his life for me and for you and for all who believe in him. Everything, even the failures, difficulties, and struggles give opportunity to know and grow more in my love and our love for him and become like him. Hebrews 13, 15 in the King James Verses tells us exactly what praising God for all he has given us and done for us in Christ should look like. A continual offering of praise, of thanksgiving, of praise on my lips, which means that my lips are constantly giving him thanks. Is there any reason or doubt as to why we should not give thanks in all things? All the wonderful things we have in Christ, the opportunities, the challenges we encounter with him, all the blessings and gifts we have in him, yes, even all the trials and pain we face, overcome and grow. And he's right there with us because he came and gave everything for us. No wonder God's word tells us to give thanks in everything. When we do, we recognize him for who he is. And we also recognize that he belongs on the throne of our hearts, our lives, and all of creation. In giving thanks in all things, we are recognizing that we can trust him no matter what. I'm not saying at all that you need to celebrate Thanksgiving and Christmas the way that I do. Each and every one of us has the freedom to enjoy and count our blessings the way that we would like and the way that means the most to us. I'm just saying that everything I give thanks for in this Thanksgiving season is because he left all the glories of heaven, came to earth, took my place, received my punishment, the payment for my sins, and in return offers me eternal life with him. Why not give thanks for everything that this good, great, and sovereign God brings or allows into your life? I can trust him in everything. Therefore, I will thank him in all things. Let me say that again. I can trust him in everything. Therefore, I will thank him in all things. Food for thought, if you only give thanks when you get what you want and or when you avoid any tough outcomes, I question whether you really understand gratitude and Christ as Lord. Learn to give thanks in all things and let him teach you why. This will be one of the greatest blessings of your life and especially your relationship with him. Let me give you three action items that I'm going to repeat every chance I get the rest of this week. Number one, make a list of all the things you're thankful for. Number two, make a list of all the things you wish were not in your life. And number three, begin to give thanks daily for both of those lists. More on Thanksgiving tomorrow. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for your prayers. Thanks always to the Lord. Make it a great day and God bless in Christ. And if you'd like to give, go to our website, loveandlordship.com. There's a give tab near the upper right corner. Click on that and it'll guide you through it. And we thank you in advance for that. And if not, keep praying until the Lord shows you who he would like you to give to. I want you to be blessed in that. I want you to know that there's much reason to give thanks this Thanksgiving season. Now, stay tuned for Bill Reeser, my good friend, Bill Reeser, on Encounter. I'm Greg Williams, and you're listening to The Authority of Love.